Here's one hell of a savage rook. Now this is chess tactic. Uh, it's more commonly known as attacking the most heavily guarded square or attacking the most fortified square in chess. It's an amazing chess tactic because you know you exactly do what your opponent does not want you to, and he has prepared everything against it, and you still do it, and that's the fun about it. It's quite um, amusing. So why to play? If you want, you can pause the video, and you should because you'll be amazed at the beauty of the move. Why to play and win the game? So I'm going to go right ahead and show you the move. If you want, you can always pause the video. Uh, do take that pleasure because it's amazing. The first move White is going to play here is going to be Rook to E5. This is an amazing move. In fact, it totally wins the game. Now putting the Rook on a square where it, where it is attacked, let us count. One, two, three, four, five, six times. That's the one square where black can bet that White is not going to put his piece. And exactly that's the square where we're going to put our piece because he just cannot capture with anything. So let's look at uh, one capture at a time. Let's see the F captures, F pawn captures. Now we have the move Rook F, Bishop F6, and that's a check from the Bishop, and that's a mate. Okay, so you can't take with that pawn. Same thing happens if this pawn takes, Bishop takes up 6, check mate. If the Knight captures, same story, that's a mate. All right, let's look at this Knight being captured. Now, knight capturing the e5 rook. Now we have bishop takes f6, still uh, the same story. Rook takes also the same story with bishop takes f6. All right. So, these two pawns and these two knights cannot capture. At the same time, the rook cannot capture because of one reply that is bishop takes f6. What happens if he takes with the bishop? Because, in fact, this also not only protects the, bishop, uh, the f6 square but also gives a check to the white king. Here's an amazing move, second move, and it's a reloader. You first bring your rook to e5, it gets captured, no problem. Now we're gonna play. Queen takes on e5. Queen goes to the e5 square. Again, she can be captured with several pieces. One, two, three, four, five of them. And yet she cannot be touched. Taking with the pawns, either this pawn or this pawn does not result into a good uh, thing because bishop f6 is just a checkmate. So the pawns cannot capture the queen. Knight capturing the queen results in the exact same thing after bishop takes f6, mate. So you cannot take with the knight, you cannot take with the rook as well because for the same reason. So what do we do here? There's nothing that can be done. In fact, the best move is rook to f8. There's also the move d5 here, which can be played. But now we have the move bishop takes and basically it's a mate in I think six moves or something. So let me just go forward and uh, show you the engine lines. Rook e6, bishop takes, king has to move. You can't really capture this because if you take then queen takes is just a checkmate. So king has to move. And now queen g3 results in a checkmate in a few moves. You can see rook cannot take because of queen e7 checkmate. Queen has to capture it and the king has nowhere to go. Queen has to capture. And now there follows a simple move. Queen check followed by a pretty checkmate on the d8 square. Wonderful checkmate. All right. Let's go back to queen to e5. What else can be done? Well, in this position, uh, let, yeah. So basically after the move, Captures, sorry, pardon me for that. Bishop takes, queen takes e5. There's not much that can be done, in fact. You can only play d5, which loses the game very quickly. Rook f8 also loses the game after bishop takes. I would prefer, I'd prefer queen takes. You know, it's always a good idea to give up the queen and, uh, and checkmate. It's a cool way to finish the game. So, the queen cannot be touched and the rook cannot be touched in the first place. So, when we play the move, rook to e5, the best move for black, which although all the losers, but it's still the best result is to play rook f6 or uh, rook f8. Now we are going to play the move. Bishop takes f6 check. And now after captures, we are going to simply play rook e8 check. It's a double attack on the king and the queen and we are going to win material. In fact, not just the queen, we are going to win a lot of material. For example, after takes, the engine suggests the move king g7, only move a uh, queen g8. And after the king goes to h6, the problem is that this king, although black has some pieces for the material deficit the king is the real problem you know this king is extremely vulnerable and now something like bishop takes d3 is quite good enough after let's say assume let's assume a check you just play g3 he can give a check over here but now just king g1 and you're completely fine you know this pieces are targets they are weaknesses they are loose pieces and now queen takes h7 is coming uh, it's quite a dangerous position to play and again, the main problem is the king on h6. That king is so exposed that there will be all kinds of tactics. And uh, white is eventually going to win. White has a huge advantage. So what a move, rook e5. Amazing move to start with. And that follows up with 
squeeny-fied. The second piece go on, goes on the most fortified, most well-defended square and still wins the game. I think this is an amazing chess tactic. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Until next time.